This is a thumbnail sketch of the Counter IED ECM Protection Range Estimator Technology. We'll start with the basic idea. Radio control roadside bombs kill soldiers. And jammers are used to provide a protection bubble to keep them safe. But there's a catch. The bubble is invisible. This leads to a question that at present cannot be answered under combat conditions. Am I inside the protection bubble right now? The idea is to make the protection bubble visible to save lives. This is the other side of the coin. It's the other half of using jamming for protection. Is the jamming actually working? And the second part, is it actually working, has been effectively ignored in combat until now. We're talking about a device to determine the ECM protection perimeter, the size of the protection bubble, on a per threat basis, in combat, and in real time. It's a device that might look like this with, for example, indicator lights on it, uh, green for safe, meaning you're inside the protection bubble, yellow for warning, means you're near the edge, red for danger, you're outside the protection bubble, and possibly a digital readout showing the range from where you are to the edge of the protection bubble. Or maybe it looks like this, integrated with equipment that's already carried by the troops. Uh, it works like a pager, so there's no transmitter, and that means there's no heavy battery. Or maybe it's integrated with a GPS navigator where we can color the ground. Again, green for safe, yellow for warning, red for danger. Provide a digital readout showing the distance to the bubble edge. And uh, even color code convoy vehicles all in real time. No one has done this yet. Okay, next part, what's it good for? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is to define a safe area around the jammer for dismounted troops and parked or moving vehicles. It could also be used for uh, science-based convoy protection uh, or for detection and avoidance of potentially dangerous conditions like berms or hills or ditches or buildings, things that can potentially shrink the size of the ECM protection bubble without you knowing it. And there are many other possible applications such as VIP protection, police operations, embassy protection, uh, special events like the Olympics, and uh, broadly speaking, special operations. Okay, why do we need this? You need this because when you switch the jamming on, you need a way to see where the protection is because it's not everywhere. And also, the environment degrades jamming. In other words, it changes the size of the protection bubble. Now, this is caused by reflections in simplest terms. And also, there's proof of dangerous effects, things that can uh, cause an effective loss of jamming power, and that shrinks the protection bubble again, potentially without you knowing it. We did some tests. The device works. The cornerstone is a propagation model which shows excellent agreement between predicted and measured power levels. Uh, tests were performed over flat asphalt at two frequencies, 900 megahertz and 1800 MHz, using three different heights. And uh, we observed consistent predictions of the protection bubble size, and that constitutes positive results. That means the same bubble was indicated no matter where the sensor was placed, as it should. Tests were also done over compressed soil and fine gravel. And again, consistent predictions were observed, and that constitutes, again, positive results. Okay, recommendations. Two prongs of activity are recommended. A cost-benefit analysis and an experiment, and they can be run concurrently. There are three steps in the cost-benefit analysis. The first step, find the proof. The recommendation is to record the jamming signal under combat conditions and look for evidence of signal degradation, which we believe you will find because we've observed it already in other locations. Second step, build a few. If signal degradation is seen, design and build several protection range estimator devices and use them to gather data under combat conditions. Then analyze the data to determine the coverage gaps on a per threat basis in terms of firstly, the area that's not protected which you thought was protected, and secondly, the time duration of the coverage gaps. The third step is a branch point where we conduct a cost benefit analysis with three possible outcomes. First possible outcome is positive, is to develop, commission, and distribute protection range estimator devices to troops for various applications. Second possible outcome is further study. Very often, an investigation raises more questions than it answers, and that's a possibility here. And the third possibility is maybe after doing the measurements and the analysis, we conclude that real-time, in-combat calculation, determination of the ECM protection bubble size isn't required because the coverage gaps are too small in surface area, or short, too short in duration, or both. 
second prong is an experiment. And in the first step, there are three steps. In the first step, at a suitable test range, we place a jammer and a protection range estimator device. We switch everything on, and the protection range estimator will establish a protection perimeter estimate. In the second step, we place an instrumented mock IED receiver inside the indicated protection perimeter and demonstrate that the IED trigger signal is not received or processed by the receiver. In other words, the IED is inside the protection bubble. Now remember that bombs inside the protection bubble don't go off. In the third step, we move the IED receiver outside the indicated protection perimeter and demonstrate that the trigger signal is received and processed. In other words, that the receiver is outside the protection perimeter. And a successful demonstration like this is a home run, and everything after that is just technical details. Okay, finally, how it works, or very loosely speaking. You need to know three things to determine the protection bubble size. You need information about the jammer, information about the local propagation environment, and information about the threat characteristics. Now, some of these things we don't know, but unknowns can be bounded, and they can be handled statistically. Now, currently, there are things called... RF sniffers, which are used to measure the jammer signal and confirm that the jammer is radiating in free space. But these do not use threat information, and they do not use information about the local environment, so there is no protection assessment. In fact, protection bubble determination is not possible without using all three of these elements. Now here are a few technical details without the technical details. Pilot signals and uh, something called genetic algorithms are used for channel characterization. And uh, statistical methods are used. Uh, they're borrowed from weather forecasting since the community, uh, that community solved a big part of this problem about 40 years ago. In conclusion, this video is about new technology that can save lives. It's the other half of the counter IED solution, and it's one that's been ignored in combat until now. This is a vital adjunct to ECM. Don't leave home without it. Partnership agreements and a funded program are required to produce a fielded product. And until that happens, military personnel will remain unnecessarily reliant on luck as a silent component of ECM protection against radio-controlled roadside bombs. And this concludes the presentation.